Welcome to Corporate Finance Explained, where we break down the essential topics every corporate finance professional needs to know. This series is narrated by AI, created using CFI's expert training materials, and designed to help you stay ahead in the world of finance. Enjoy this week's deep dive. Welcome to the deep dive, everybody. I think we're all kind of fascinated by this idea of AI in corporate finance. You know, imagine a world, just for a second, where your financial models are completely dynamic. They're updating based on live market data all the time. I mean, that's what's so exciting is that it it really addresses um, some of the big pain points that finance professionals have been dealing with for a long time, right? Right. Like data overload. Yeah. The constant struggle to keep those forecasts accurate in a world that's changing every second, right? Yeah. And that pressure to be more strategic. Yeah, absolutely. Move beyond just counting the beans. Yeah, right. yeah totally. So AI offers speed and real-time insights and even the ability to manage risk before it even becomes a problem. So not just doing things faster, but actually doing things smarter, like we were saying. Exactly. Can you can you give us a quick glimpse under the hood, though? Sure. Like, what kind of AI magic is making all this possible? It really comes down to crunching massive amounts of data. Yeah. And it's spotting those patterns that humans simply can't see. So we're talking about machine learning algorithms that can analyze historical data, live market feeds, and even things like... Um, Social media sentiment. Wow. To predict future trends. So like having a crystal ball, but it's it's data powered. Yeah, exactly. It's not magic. <laughs> I I love it. Okay. Let's let's start with Unilever. Okay. I hear they're doing some really interesting things with AI in their supply chain. They are. They're a great example of how AI is shifting finance from being reactive to proactive. Right. So they're using AI to predict fluctuations in raw material costs. So that means they can adjust their procurement strategies before any price hikes even hit. Wow. Which protects their bottom line. That's incredibly insightful. I mean, they're not just keeping up with the market. They're they're anticipating it. Yeah. That's huge. How do they how do they make sure though that those predictions are accurate? Yeah, that's a great question. Like what if the AI gets it wrong? This is where, you know, human expertise still plays a really critical role. Mm -hmm. So finance professionals are working really closely with data scientists to train those AI models, okay. refine the algorithms, Got it. validate the outputs. You know, it's a partnership okay. where AI is doing the heavy lifting, but humans are ensuring the accuracy uh, and that it aligns with their strategy. So it's not about replacing human judgment. It's more like amplifying it. Right. I like that. Mm -hmm. Now, how about another example where AI is taking forecasting to the next level? Um, JP Morgan Chase is a, is a really good example. Okay. They're using AI to assess credit risk, but they're going beyond those traditional credit scores. Okay. So they're analyzing things like your spending patterns. Oh, wow. Or even how often you change your phone number. Really? Yeah. So this gives them a much richer picture of the applicant's financial health. That's interesting. So they're, they're kind of, they're using AI to see patterns in data that humans might miss, which leads to better, more informed lending decisions. Yeah, exactly. What about what about companies that rely on really accurate demand forecasting like Procter and Gamble? Yeah. How, how are they using AI? They're they're a great example of how AI can optimize working capital. OK, so they're applying machine learning to their demand forecasting. And what that does is it lets them fine tune their inventory management. Got it. And it reduces those inefficiencies. Makes sense. So that means less money tied up in excess stock. Okay. And a smoother flow of goods to consumers. So again, this really proactive approach to finance, it seems like that's a recurring theme here. Like AI is giving companies almost a sixth sense for how to deal with uncertainty in the market. Yeah. Now we've We've been talking a lot about forecasting, but I know AI is also having a big impact on how companies make decisions about their investments. Where where are we seeing that? Yeah, for sure. Um, one area where it's really taking shape is in financial modeling and capital allocation. Okay. So companies like Airbnb are using AI to dynamically adjust their pricing models. Makes sense. Based on a whole range of factors. Yeah. Things like seasonality, yeah. competitor rates, even how booking trends are shaping up. Wow. This allows them to optimize revenue in real time and respond to market changes as they happen. So instead of relying on these like static models that can get outdated so quickly, they're using AI to keep their pricing strategies agile and responsive. Active. That's mm -hmm. a that's a pretty significant change. What what other examples are out there of companies doing this? 
Well, think about Goldman Sachs. Okay. They're using AI to run what are called Monte Carlo simulations. Okay. So these are these are essentially like virtual stress tests that let them see how their investment portfolios would perform under all sorts of different economic scenarios. Oh, wow. All in real time. Wow. So this helps them adjust their risk exposure yeah. and make smarter decisions in a, in a world that's constantly changing. So they're they're basically simulating the future and then using that to make decisions. Right. It's almost like like peering into a financial multiverse to choose the best path forward. I like that. Yeah. And this agility, this ability to react quickly, it's also being used by companies like Siemens. Yeah. They're they're using AI to allocate capital in real time so they can shift investments to different parts of the business based on how things are doing at that moment. Right. And based on how the market looks, which means their resources are always being used the most effectively. Yep. It's amazing. This is such a far cry from, you know, the old days of static spreadsheets and quarterly reports. Yeah. It seems like AI is really turning finance into a real-time strategic game where the winners are the ones who can adapt the fastest. That's exactly right. Yeah. And it's not just about speed. It's about precision and insight. Right. AI is allowing companies to make decisions with a level of granularity and foresight right. that just wasn't possible before. Okay, this is all this is all incredibly fascinating. We've seen how AI is impacting forecasting, risk management, even capital allocation. You know, it's clear that that traditional image of a finance professional hunched over a calculator um, is is rapidly evolving. Yeah, we've talked about the impact AI is having on all these different financial functions, but I'm I'm really curious to dig into how this is impacting the. Th the humans, the people mm. in finance. Are we seeing a new type of finance professional emerge here? Absolutely. The the finance professionals who are really thriving in this AI-driven landscape, um, they're they're embracing this more strategic and insights-driven role. Mm. You know, they're they're less focused on the number crunching and, and more involved in shaping the future direction of their organizations. So it's less about being a historian of financial data and more about being an architect of the company's financial future. Exactly. Exactly. They're becoming like internal consultants. Okay. Using their expertise and and those AI powered insights to to guide their organizations through a, a world that's becoming increasingly complex, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it's definitely getting more and more complex. Um, that sounds like a pretty huge shift in, in responsibility. It is. What What are some specific examples of how these these new age finance professionals are are leveraging AI to their advantage? Sure. Well, let's let's look at FP and A. You know, financial planning and analysis. Okay. You know, AI-powered forecasting tools are giving FP&A teams the ability to to move beyond just reporting what happened in the past. Right, right. They're using AI to to generate these dynamic forecasts, um, explore multiple scenarios, mm -hmm. and and then provide those those strategic recommendations to the business. So instead of just looking in the rearview mirror, they're using AI to to navigate the road ahead. Exactly. But but how how much can we actually trust these AI predictions? Yeah. Aren't there aren't there some situations where human intuition and experience might be more reliable? That's that's a great point. Um you know, AI isn't a magic bullet mm -hmm. and and human judgment is still absolutely critical. The key is finding that right balance. Okay. So finance professionals are are learning to use AI as this powerful tool to augment their own analysis. Got it. So they're they're validating the the outputs of those AI systems. Okay. Looking for those potential biases right. or or blind spots and then applying their own expertise to an interpret the results. So it really sounds like this this collaboration, this partnership between humans and AI is, is really where the magic happens. It is, it is. But but this shift towards a more strategic role, it's not limited to just FP&A, right? No, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Think about treasury management. You know, AI-powered tools are being used to automate those those routine tasks. Yeah. Things like cash management. Yeah. Um, forecasting liquidity needs. Right. Even mitigating those financial risks. Okay. So this frees up the treasury professionals to to really focus on, you know, optimizing the the company's financial performance. Makes sense. And building that resilience against against those unexpected challenges. Well, you're right, because there are always unexpected challenges. Always. So so AI can handle the the repetitive tasks, allowing the the human experts to to focus on that big picture strategy. It's it's like having a tireless assistant that never takes a coffee break. Exactly. Exactly. And that ability to to anticipate and adapt, it's it's becoming increasingly important in today's business environment. Yeah, for sure. It's it's changing all the time. Yeah, it's constantly throwing curved dolls. Yeah.
Speaking of curveballs, how are these new age finance professionals preparing themselves for for the the challenges in this this world that's always in flux? What what skills are they are they focusing on? Well, data literacy is is becoming absolutely essential. Makes sense. You know, it's it's not enough to just be good with numbers anymore. Yeah. Finance professionals need to be comfortable working with with large data sets. Mm. You know, understanding how to to extract those insights from the data. Right. And and being able to communicate those insights really effectively to to their stakeholders. So it's it's not just about crunching numbers, it's about telling the story behind those numbers. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're they're learning to become like data storytellers. Okay. You know, using those those visualizations um and and compelling narratives to to help their colleagues understand the the financial implications of of those key decisions right right and and that takes a, co a combination of of like technical skills like, right like data analysis and visualization and those kind of softer skills like critical mm -hmm. thinking and communication exactly exactly so so it sounds like the the ideal finance professional of the future will need to be like an analyst and a storyteller and a strategist all rolled into one that's that's a pretty tall order it is no. it is and on top of that you know, they need to be fluent in the language of AI. Right. They need to understand how those systems work, what their their limitations are, mm -hmm. and how to effectively collaborate with with them to to make those better decisions. So it's almost like they need to become AI whisperers, able to to coax the insights and and value out of these really complex systems. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. But but isn't there a concern that AI could eventually replace human finance professionals altogether? Yeah, I mean that's a that's a question that comes up a lot. It's it's a valid concern, mm. uh, but but I I see it differently. I I think the the future of, of finance is is really about collaboration, not replacement. Okay. The the most successful finance professionals are going to be those who can who can partner with with AI. Oh. You know, leverage its strengths, mm. and and focus on those areas where human expertise is still irreplaceable. So it's not humans versus machines. It's more like uh, humans and machines working together exactly. to achieve something that's greater than either one could on their own. Exactly. It yeah. sounds like a like a pretty exciting vision for the future of finance. It is. The possibilities are, are endless. This has been incredibly insightful. You know, we've explored how AI is shaping the, the skills and the responsibilities, even the mindset of, of the finance professional. But we're not done yet. I, I'm eager to hear some real world examples of how AI is being applied in finance today. And I know there are some some ethical considerations we need to to address as well. You know, from more proactive strategies to a whole new breed of finance professionals, it's clear that AI is it's more than just hype. This is this is here to stay. Yeah, I think the best way to really get it is to to see some specific examples of AI in action. I agree. We touched on a few earlier, but let's let's dive in a little deeper. Okay. You mentioned HSBC using AI to fight fraud. Right. That that sounds like something out of a, a sci-fi movie, honestly. It is pretty impressive. They're analyzing literally billions of transactions in real time, looking for for even the tiniest patterns that might that might point to fraudulent activity. AI can AI can process information on a scale that humans just can't match. So it's not just about catching the obvious fraud attempts. It's it's about finding those little anomalies that would just go right past a human analyst. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what about in the world of investment? Sure. We talked about BlackRock a little bit earlier, but I'd, I'd love to hear more. Yeah. So BlackRock is a great example of how AI can uncover those hidden opportunities. You know, they're using it to, to power their investment strategy. So they're they're crunching massive amounts of data from, you know, market trends to company financials, even social media sentiment and satellite imagery of of shipping routes. Uh, it's a lot of data, but it allows them to identify patterns and trends that humans might miss completely. So it's like it's like they're using AI to connect these dots that would otherwise be invisible. Right. And this kind of data-driven insight, I mean, that's that's becoming so valuable in this age of just constant information overload. It really is. The amount of data available is it's just too much for human analysts to handle. But AI is great at going through all of that and, and picking out the meaningful signals. It helps investors make more informed decisions. So AI isn't just about speed, then. It's about seeing the world through a different lens. Yeah. One that can that can take in and understand information on a scale we couldn't have imagined just a few years ago. Yeah. And as AI technology keeps evolving, we can expect even more, more sophisticated applications in finance. Like what? Well, imagine, imagine AI systems 
that don't just analyze data, but they actually learn from their mistakes. Okay. Constantly improving their algorithms to be even more accurate and insightful. That's that's a pretty exciting prospect. But with this kind of power, I mean, there's there's got to be some concerns about misuse or unintended consequences. Of course, yeah. Like with any powerful technology, AI has to be developed and used responsibly. Right. We have to be really aware of potential biases in the data that's used to train those algorithms. Hmm. We have to make sure that these systems benefit everyone, not just a small group. So it's not just about building powerful AI. It's about building trustworthy AI. Exactly. You know, systems that are transparent, accountable, and aligned with with our values. Right. It's a It's a huge responsibility. Yeah, it is. As AI becomes more and more a part of our financial systems, we need to put ethics and responsibility first. Well, this has been a really eye-opening conversation. We've gone from, you know, the basics of how AI is being used in finance to to the really big questions about the future of the whole industry. It's been great talking with you about this. Yeah, me too. And to our listeners, we, we hope this deep dive has given you a better understanding of just how powerful AI is in corporate finance. It is powerful. It's a, it's a field that's changing so quickly. Stay curious, keep learning, and... And who knows, maybe you'll be the one to develop the next AI application that changes the world of finance. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. Thanks for listening to Corporate Finance Explained. If you found this episode valuable, be sure to check out more episodes and explore CFI's highly rated courses at corporatefinanceinstitute.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into essential finance topics. See you next time.